What's up everyone? Today's analysis looks at two of the top female players in the world, Nurel Sherbini and Amanda Sobhi. And this is an awesome angle that PSA Squash TV included on their website recently from the final of the women's 2021 CIB Black Ball Open. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this tactical scenario where Nurel Sherbini and Amanda Sobi have been exchanging some length on the right side of the court. So forehand for Shabini, backhand for Sobi. And as you can see from the image on your screen, Sobi is under pressure on this side. Now what I'm hoping to show to you guys through this clip is a very common pattern that you can exploit when you're playing your own opponents. And what you're gonna see is it all stems from good length, and then you create attacking opportunities. Now, if you remember, we talked about patterns in a previous video. So in this case, you're gonna notice that they're playing a pattern of length, and then a slightly short ball comes up, Sherbini attacks that short ball because she has options. Now, you're gonna see that Sherbini hits this ball from the mid court. Normally, Sherbini could hit a straight drive, a drop, a boast, a cross, a kill. She has so many options. And because presumably she's played some of these options throughout this match, Sobi has to be totally centered and ready to respond to any shot that Sherbini hits, which is what causes her to fall under pressure to begin with. So now check this out. I'm going to play the video in regular speed then in half speed, and then in super slow-mo, so we can analyze it together. So first up, regular speed. Okay, that was regular speed. Nice little sequence. If you get a chance, pause this video. Make some notes on anything you picked up in there. If you, didn't, if you don't want to do that, get your notebook now and make some notes when I play it in half speed. So here we go, I'm going to play half speed now. Okay, beautiful. Next up. I'm going to play this in slow-mo and walk you guys through the different elements of it step by step. So you see Sherbini hits a good length, has Sobi under pressure, and now check this out. So a couple of things are happening here. You see where the ball took its first bounce? Right there. It's going to take its first bounce right by the begin the start of the service box. Then you're also going to notice that Sherbini is in front of Sobi. So Sobi is stuck behind her because from this position, Sherbini has a ton of options. Now, if this length was tighter to the side wall, well, then Sherbini's options would have been more limited because she couldn't hit a boast, she couldn't hit a cross. It would only be limited to more or less to one side if the ball was really tight to the side wall. But because this ball is a little bit loose, Sherbini now has a ton of options and Sobi's under a bit of pressure. Also because the ball is loose, Sobi has to stand behind her. She can't push all the way up to the tee. If she pushes all the way up to the tee, she runs the risk of getting burned with a straight drive. And then she's probably going to get a no let if Sherbini hits a ball straight through the back of the court. So she has to kind of stay here and be able to cover the back, cover the front, and cover the left side of the court. So we start off there. And with all of the options that Sherbini has, what does she go with? She hits a boast. Now. Sherbini is playing smart because you can see Sobi's actually Sherbini can't see that Sobi's moving to the right side but she just has this feeling because she's played these patterns she's been playing into this back right corner for several shots earlier in this rally and because of that she has this sense that Sobi's going to be moving over to that side and then she plays a boast and the ball's actually moving into the opposite corner of the court and then from there you can see Sobi having to respond and react and now here's the thing you see Sherbini's eyes are on the ball. Sobi is reaching under pressure. She's under a lot of pressure. She's coming with a low backswing. She's playing it safe. She's doing the right thing by coming in and just countering that ball. Now from that position, depending on the wrist strength, depending on the timing and the skills, you could try to flick the ball. So Sobi may try to flick this ball cross court on like a cross drop or play like this trickle boast or something like that. But that's higher risk when you're under this much pressure. 
easier shot when you're under a significant amount of pressure is to play that straight counter drop. Try to get it tight to that side wall. And give yourself time to recover. So let's see. Sobi plays that counter drop. And then check this out. Because she's under so much pressure, she had to actually take one extra step past that lunge, put that right foot down into the ground, decelerate, and then push back to the T. And now watch. As Sobhi is actually decelerating, Sherbini is already coming in to play her shot. And Sobhi is just starting to move back. Sherbini is already crossing her. And so now Sherbini is coming on to play this ball. Sobhi is in midair in her split step. But if you noticed, her momentum is going backwards. So she's jumping with her little split and she's moving backwards because she still hadn't recovered to the T. So now she's moving backwards. Sherbini's jumping in really fast. And Sherbini knows this. So what's Sherbini going to do? She's going to play that counter drop. She's getting on it quickly, playing that counter drop because she knows Sobi's momentum is going backwards. That's awareness of what your player is doing, what your opponent is doing, and what the optimal shot to play is given your opponent's position, tendencies, movement, etc. and the amount of pressure they're in. So now you see Sherbini attacks short. So he's coming in to play the counter because again, she's under so much pressure. Now here's the other thing. Sherbini played a nice tight attacking ball. So she didn't clear very far back. If you noticed, Sobi was all the way almost at the short line. Maybe she was at the short line, if I'm, I'm forgetting now, truthfully. But I know she was pretty far back. And Sherbini is all the way over here because she knows that Sobi is under a ton of pressure and she probably doesn't have too many options. The other thing from being this far up is that you cut your opponent's angles. So if Sobi did try to flick the ball straight, Sherbini puts her racket out and it's a stroke on this left-hand side wall unless Sobi hits a wicked lob. If Sobi tries to go cross, Sherbini puts her racket out and she can cover, because she's so far forward, the angle has to be super wide when Sobi hits that cross. Otherwise, Sherbini can volley on her forehand side over here. And if Sobi tries any trickle bows or counter drop or anything like that, well, Sherbini's right there to get that ball. So if you've hit a tight ball into the front, standing this far up in the court is actually very effective. And then Sherbini comes in. Sobi is, you know, she's going sideways. She, If Sherbini were to counter drop, Sobi wouldn't even be close to it because she's moving backwards. But Sherbini plays in basic sound tactics, which is, let me ask you a question. What's the open part of the court? Presumably you said the back right. So what is Sherbini going to do? She gets on the ball early, knowing that Sobi is scrambling and puts that ball cross court to make Sobi do as much work as possible. The cross court's also really effective because Sobi came, the path she took to the ball was close to the side wall. So she's pinned against that left side wall. So that cross court, she has to cover the width and the length of the court, which is, it's a lot of work. So there we go. Sherbini plays the cross and check that out. Second bounce behind the service box, getting right close to that back wall nick. So really good target from Sherbini. Doesn't give Sobi a chance. Now, lesser players would go and crush that ball and possibly over hit it. So if you're playing someone that's super fit and, you, and you're in this really commanding attacking position like Sherbini was, and you go crush it because you're trying to win the point, you over hit it, your opponent's actually back into the rally. So kudos to Sherbini for having the awareness number one to position herself accordingly, get on the ball early while Sobi's momentum is going back, and then also execute a very effective cross court that's fading second bounce behind the back wall so that Sobi has no chance of even picking it up. And there you go. Ball's done. Sobi has no choice but to retrieve it with her racket off of the floor. I hope you enjoyed that analysis. I hope you guys are starting to link the concepts from these videos together. So we talked about patterns in previous videos. Here you saw a pattern being set up with length, force the short ball, play the Boston into the other corner of the court because your opponent's already getting sucked into one side. 
And then from there, you're looking at your opponent's moment, momentum, their movement patterns, their tendencies, and you are raising your awareness to play effective shots. Now, again, if you like these videos, please give the thumbs up, like it, subscribe, comment. Let me know if there's more that you want to see, specific players, things like that. I'd love to hear your suggestions and share the video if you find value in it. I'd appreciate it. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy squashing until then.